Okay, welcome to another tutorial, and today we are going to be taking a cartoon drawing and we're going to prepare it to be drawn with our robot. So let's get started. Um, we are going to create a new document here and we'll just start from scratch. So here we are with a new document, and the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make our document the size that we're going to want to draw. We're going to change it to inches, and we're going to make this 6 by 6 inches. So that looks good. And now we have our page size defined. We are going to drag in our drawing that we're going to draw. This is going to be a drawing of Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie is now in the public domain. Thank you for that. And so we are going to draw Steamboat Willie. We are going to change our display so that it is back to normal view. And we have an image here, but we need to have something that our robot can actually draw. So what we need to do is we need to trace this so that we have an outline of our cartoon here. So we are going to go path and trace bitmap. You can see here that we have live updates enabled, and you can see when you change the threshold, uh, it is going to change how this is going to be traced. Um, this looks good here, so we'll just click Apply. And you can see now here that we have our original drawing and our new um, vectorized drawing. Let's go ahead and we're going to change our view back to Outline. And you can see that there's nothing for a robot to draw over here, so we're going to just delete that. We're going to move our cartoon back here in the middle, and let's go. I'm holding down Control and Shift while I'm dragging around. And we'll just move that into the center. That looks pretty good. So now we just have the outline, and we actually do want to have this filled in. So for this, we are going to use the Hatch Fill extension inside of the AxiDraw utilities, and we'll leave a link in the description on how to add the AxiDraw utilities to your Inkscape version. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to bring up a dialog. Let's go ahead and select on the shape that we want to use. We'll bring this open again. You can have the hatch spacing however width. You can select the width of the hatch spacing. Uh, two pixels is going to be good for us here. And we also want to connect nearby ends so that a robot can just go ahead and draw back and forth a bunch of times without picking up the pen every time. So we're going to click OK. And this will calculate for a second, and we should have something coming up here pretty soon. OK, that looks good. We'll hit Close. You can see that the pen is going to go back and forth and keep drawing. Um, so we're pretty close here, except the one thing for the moment, our robot is not going to be able to draw straight lines. So, or I'm sorry, not going to be able to draw arcs. So we're going to have to turn everything into straight lines. So first, we are going to have this selected. And when the hatch fill does its thing, it is actually going to have a group of the outline and the hatch fill. So we are going to first need to um, go to object and ungroup. And you can see object and ungroup. And you can see now that we have two different objects here. We have our hatch fill and the outline. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to undo that real quick. And now we actually want to have both of those selected. And we are going to combine them back together. This is a little bit different than group. But we are going to combine. So in path, we are going to go combine. And you can see now we're back to just having one object. We're going to go back to our extensions. We are going to now modify path. And we are going to approximate curves by straight lines. Another dialog is going to pop up. Point 1 is going to be fine. How about we zoom in a little bit here so that we can see what's actually happening. Let's go ahead and we're going to bring this back. Modify back path. Flatness 0.1% is fine. Let's go ahead and click apply. This is going to process for a moment. And you can see now that we have a bunch of straight lines instead of having our arcs. So everything looks good on our drawing here. We are pretty close. Now we just need to do one last step, which is to export this as G-code. So we are going to go back to our extensions again. We are going to go G-code tools, and we are going to go path to G-code. 
we're going to get another dialog. We're going to go to Preferences. We are going to go ahead here and um, give it a file name. So let's just go um, Steamboat Willie. We are going to add a numeric suffix to the file name. I like to have this. If we keep creating a file with the same name, it'll just keep incrementing the number so that we have a new number. And the other thing that you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to select a di directory that you want to save this. So we have a folder here that we're going to save it into. And now we're going to have to go back to the path to G-code tab. And cutting order subpath by subpath is going to be fine, but you do want to probably make sure that you have this sort paths to reduce distance. Um, and that's just going to make it draw a bunch faster because wherever the pin lifts up, it's going to go and find another path that's close to it to go ahead and start that one. So we're just going to click Apply. It's going to take a moment to process. Okay, looks like we have completed everything. We're just going to click OK. Our G code is now saved to the directory that we asked for. It is also, um, and our G code should be saved to the directory that we set it up. You can see also that our origin is in the bottom left corner. We're going to want to leave everything, just the default values um, that come out of Inkscape, uh, because those values are the ones that are going to be picked up and we can mess with those in the next step. So let's go ahead and go to that next step. Okay, so here we are in this uh, Inkscape to SCARA converter program that we have here. Um, let's go ahead and we can take a look at that if we want. So this is the program that's actually running here. You can see that we have some GUI elements here, and those are the ones that we're going to see in the GUI. We have this code editor called Ink Sender. This is where we're going to send our G code in originally. It's going to go to the Inkscape compiler, turn that into G script. We're going to be able to view it here into the translator, which will move it around to where we want it to be. We'll again be able to see where it ends up into the kinematic transformer, which is going to turn it into the code that the robot's actually going to use, and then we'll go ahead and display that one as well. So let's go back here and we will um, process our file. So again, ink sender, we want to get a file out of this one. Um, we called it Steamboat Willy. There was already one here. Let's go ahead and grab this new one here. So we're just going to open this guy up. You can see here that we have the G-code file. Everything is looking good. We are also going to want to translate this around. So again, um, we're six inches wide, so we're just going to go X, negative 100, and let's go negative 300 in Y. And that's going to take our file and move it down somewhere right in front of where we'll be facing. So let's go ahead and hit the Submit button, and that's going to take a second here, and we are going to process. You can see that some more codes popped up here, and you can see that we have uh, some more that has shown up here. Let's go ahead and break this down. So we have this original one here. Let's make it a new color so we can see which one we're talking about. So you can see that this pink one here is the original, and you can see that the origin is where it was set in Inkscape. We can move down the line. Now we have this translated one. It took it and moved it negative 100 millimeters and negative 300 millimeters respectively. Let's go ahead and make this one another color. And you can see now that this is actually like where it's going to be drawn when the robot actually draws it. But this code isn't what the robot's actually going to do. That is actually going to be this one up here. Um, so let's go ahead and turn that one a different color. We'll just do red. And you can see here that this is actually the transformed code that the robot is actually going to be uh, running. So we can go ahead and we can save this file. And let's just go ahead and call this one uh, Steamboat. And we will export this, and then we will draw it on our robot.